Hmm. That was a friend from the living centre. That's the back of my head. <laughs> That's, that's where I'll out for the Yeah, Yeah, that's on the, that was the last time I went to Disneyland Paris with her. That was the year she got um, diagnosed and she started to not feel very well again. It was the buzz ones as well. Yeah, that was when <laughs> we parked on the Manda Centre and walked through. Um, the disabled spaces were halfway up the car park and as we walked through, she was on the wall, she hadn't got a clue. Lorraine had already said she'd seen her on the on the wall in the Manda Centre, in the mm. toilets, and then we walked through and that was there. Can't even recognise her there, that would have No, nah, that was... I don't like them pictures. <laughs> that was after the chemo when her hair was coming back. These are the nice pictures, because that's where she was happy. Yeah. No, I remember that one. <laughs> the, yeah, that was the when wedding. Meghan and Harry got yeah, married. Yeah. After heart attack ill, I think that was the last time she walked up. You're right. Yeah, some of them are a bit tough. Yeah. As usual, mother with her eyes closed on the photo. <laughs> she never keep her eyes open, they was always shut. That's Lan Dudna. That's, that's Lan Dudna. That was before she was, um, we ended up taking her to hospital and uh, go to Lan Dudna for a week and she spends three nights in the hospital. Mm. It's like she wanted to check out every hospital in the area where that's she was. a few times then. Yeah. I think that's the hardest thing because you miss... You miss having the house to get to, just yeah, round the corner to pop in for a cup of tea. Any given anyway. That was, a, that was a good trip. That was. She loved it. That was what she. That day a week is what she lived for. Considering all. she never wanted to go, and she thought she wasn't going to be able to go again, she was really Gutted. upset. Actually. <laughs> yeah. Happy memories, that. Yeah. She she came became very dependent on me. Um, so I, it, I had a lot of anxiety issues and had some counselling then. So it, the first experience of Compton was for me. It was like, right, you need to sit and you need to talk to someone. Um, so it was me that went to Compton first and I um, spoke to Annette Allen from the social services team and she was just amazing, absolutely amazing. She walked through everything with me and said, and it was Annette that suggested that mum go to the day centre. So I went home, <laughs> said, you want to go to Compton? <laughs> no, no, I'm not going there. You go, you go there to die. And it was like, just do me a favour. Just go for the day. If you don't like it, you haven't got to go again. I'll ring them up. I'll tell them you don't want to go again. Just do me a favour and go. Oh, and she fell in love with it from the minute she went. Because like Stephen said, she met friends. But if she got any issues, the doctors were there and they could also see all the results from New Cross as well so if she'd been yes. and had the blood test or something and they would pick things up there and tell her and reassure her so she was great and she'd come home and so she hadn't got to worry or wait till the next oncologist appointment or ring up the secretary and try and get him to ring her back but like if she hadn't been to the day centre she would still have had it in her head that if she's going in Compton because she'd been going, I mean, she must have been two years going to that day centre, must it? Yeah, because it gave us so much, not, yeah. I know we talked about it at the end, which was amazing, but it was the, what it gave her while she, while was, she was still was, here. While she was dealing while with While she was here, then a few years when she was here. While she was living with cancer. But this gave her something, she loved a garden, always in a garden, everybody knew that, everybody seen photos of a garden. But then, other than that, she hadn't got much, but this gave her something outside of that, and it did make her get out a bit more, she'd go to have a... Like I said, she'd go and get her meds and go and have a, a drink in Sainsbury's and they all knew her mm -hmm. and bring her drinks over. But it, I think that helped her to, to get out a bit more because they, they pushed her to do things for herself as well when she wasn't there. Well, that's when she started seeing Jan again, didn't she? A yeah, friend from yeah, well, she, a bridesmaid. She did. Maid. She, 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 and, and Chris from I don't think she would have done that without know. it. She didn't want to go out. She'd have been in her own, like, her own little thing at home, sat there, and this gave her something outside of her. Mm. It, it did give her a... It did give her years extra. It, mm. it gave her years extra that she wouldn't have had and time she so. wouldn't have had, definitely. I think it took her by surprise. But it was like I say, it was the help she got through. It was the biggest thing for me. And I, I forget until you talk about it and then you realise how many times she did tell me, oh, I've seen this or somebody's done this for me or seen this for me. And it, it made a massive difference. I think we knew from the... From when she diagnosed, obviously you can look up, you get a rough yeah, timeline. You, you, you Google you know, and you shouldn't. You shouldn't, but we, we were looking, we knew we'd got roughly five years, and it near enough was to the, to the point, to be honest. So we knew what we were looking at. We didn't really discuss it with her, but we knew what we were looking at. And it, but it, this, the, the, the Compton entry did, it just helped to make it easier for her. I don't think a lot, her life would have been a lot harder without it. She yeah. lived for the kids, but can't always be with the kids because we're 25 miles down the road. But it, this gave her something else. That was the main thing for me. Even the doctors had said to me, your mum 
doesn't know what she's here or she doesn't want to know why she's here but we're looking after her and because she'd come from the day centre and she'd been there ages and because of Covid the day centre staff were working in the um, inpatient unit they all knew her even the doctors that had never met her before oh yeah you're our calendar girl from when she was on the back of the bus she was loving it she was it was a superstar and like the the biggest thing for mom was we both went in oh i'm not sure you saw her in the first room did you because she was still shielding with amanda but she was like i said there's a beautiful garden out there i can't yeah, I see did. it within 10 minutes yes you did because you took some things the from the boys yeah. within 10 minutes the bed was turned around so she could look out the window but she said what about the wires and the nurses were like well we'll sort out the wires your bed's still plugged in it's out, it's up to us if we make sure we don't trip over the wires and she she loved it because she could she could see outside because the garden was what she loved to think of having to deal with what the nurses had to deal with with her in them final few days to have to do that for your mum I, I can't imagine how people actually do it but for them to do it for us and us not have to have to deal with that side of it is is amazing that's why i'd always do anything i can to help because to not have to do that and you just get to to come and see them is is everything not just at the compton thing but out more after as well it opened things up for her the help they provided for her while she was there with medical issues that they, they looked into for her and helped her with absolutely amazing definitely massive amount of help and at the end, it was something that the, there might be a stigma that you've, people have heard from before. And it, yeah, a lot of it is true. It is, you know what's coming then, but the, the help that they provided was amazing. And like Claire says, I can't thank you. That's the reason why I'm here. I've got to go back onto a night shift tonight, but anything I can do to, to help awareness and helping people to use this, definitely don't even think, consider not using it because it's, it's an amazing service. And it, the way she got treated respectfully and everything towards the end was just amazing. I don't know how they deal with it, I don't know how they do it, but it's, it's great. Definitely use it, don't, don't even consider not. That's for me. It, it's, a, it's a different type of care. I mean, yeah. like I said, the NHS are, are great, but this is like, it's just a different type Personal. of care. Yeah, they, and they do know them as a person, yeah. they're not just, oh, there's no question of trying to find out what mum's name was before the doctors approached the bed. And like, they would ring me up at all times if I just said can you give me an update and once they realised that mum didn't want to know that she was you know it was at the end of life then they would ring me with the updates or they would look me up or come and talk to me they'd know when I was visiting they'd know what time I'd be there so they'd come and sit with us. Towards the end with her is she <laughs> she went off into like her own world really so she and I, I, it's hard to Um, she, she was not. She, she was in her own world, really, which I think was the best way to be. I don't think she really knew what was what was happening, but it was just it was just the way things was handled. Nothing was pushed. Everything because we saw it quite a lot, like leading up to it. I had to come back, rushed over from somewhere because when we knew it was coming towards the end, and it, it was just the fact that she was still treated as she was before. Nothing was. It wasn't as if she wasn't here. She was still treated as she was just still the same person, which obviously she was. But I can I can imagine in some places it could be hard for people to treat them that way. But nothing nothing changed. But it was it was just the way it was handled was good because they didn't change how they spoke to her, how they treated her at all, right up until the end. They didn't they didn't change anything, and it was obviously the hardest the hardest thing I've ever done, and probably ever no, ever will do, but the hardest thing I've ever done. And it just made it easier when we were growing up. The stigma of Compton was always that Compton was there for people you go in there, you don't come, you're the only one way you come out, but in a, in a way, so towards the end, that is true, but it's what that provides and what that peace of mind that gives to families of, of us. It's hard to repay what that did, but it's, it's, it's amazing because it just takes that away from you having to go through that situation and somebody else is doing it for you and how much you appreciate what it was and what, what, it, what it did and what it meant we didn't have to do. And knowing they're safe in, in the, you know, the hardest time of their lives, is you, you can't repay that, in, in my mind, because it made it easier for us and for her. So in September last year, so a year and a couple of months after Mum passed away, I got signed off work with grief. They said it was like, because of Covid, 
and life not being normal when mum passed away and then life starting to get back to normal I my life was then hold on a minute where's my mum you know and they said it was like a delayed form of grief so they said do some bereavement counselling again and rather than go through the NHS I rang Compton and said look what's the situation am I too late has it been too long and they were like no from like mum's second diagnosis all the way through, you know, all this time, what's it been, 18 months, well, it's two years this year, I'm still getting support from Compton and I don't know what I'd have done without it. And I think that's what people don't realise, that the support's there for the family as well. And although Stephen hasn't used it, him and the children have been offered it if they need it. Don't, absolutely don't hesitate to use Compton ever because there's just, it's a different level of care and the whole family will get looked after. There's no hesitation at all. I don't know what we'd have done. Honestly, nah. I don't know what we'd have done without them. To have to deal with that final thing's just, I just can't even yeah. contemplate it, but it, it was it was handled. Like I say, even at the end, even after she had mm. passed, the way they dealt with her while we, was, you know, while we were there was just... They were straight over to us, weren't they? The yeah. two nurses, second, and second it, to it's awful, with I us. can't even remember. Because obviously they know when it's... Yeah, they, and it's, yeah. they knew and they came and... Respectful. Prop and yeah, you, you need we needed it. Us in that. Well, on mm. the on the last day when we knew it was the last day, and we got the phone call to say there was only meant to be one visit a day, wasn't it? But then the nurse rang me, then the doctor rang me, and said your brother, you and your brother are, are welcome to come together. We'll let you in. And then like when we thought mum had gone, and then they said no, she's still here. But you know, it, it was minutes, wasn't it? But they were like they were both there with us drinks they went and got us drinks and told us we could sit there as long as we wanted and yeah we weren't rushed we weren't pushed no. nothing was it was what we wanted to do where we wanted to do it and mm. and then i got a phone call it. the next day from the mm. top doctor checking in that we were okay and telling me about the death certificate and yeah yeah it's yeah, just a different have, level of care don't not think of it no Definitely. i'd have to thank from so I'll take from all my, all my family because it, I couldn't have dealt with, with the end without it. It was just, it's unreal, and you can't pay back what what it gave for us. So yeah, I'm ultimately thankful and always will be. Yeah, uh, thank you to anybody that's raising money because from as someone that's used the service, yeah. myself and for my family, from the bottom of my heart, thank you because every penny, it, it the service is priceless, absolutely yeah. priceless. So thank you.